Who in here? One, two, two, one, two, three, and go. go. There it is, baby. There it is. Woo! We call Woo! this the little Sunday Woo! service jingle. Woo! And Woo! man, oh man, it feels sweet after Woo! a big old, a big old fat George W. Ooh. That George W was so big. That baby. is the, one of the. I, I felt like it was a very satisfying George W, guys. Let me get real strong in my pants. Real <laughs> strong in my pants, my sweatpants. <laughs> hey! Hey, welcome to the CanFad post game, which we like to call the Sunday service. We got the bandwagon boys sitting over there, sipping on some bubbly, sipping on sipping some sipping screech. On some bubbly, bubbly, and sipping. guys, what a tale. What a tale. Because it felt like. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest here. It felt closer than the 3310 score says. Look. It yeah. did to me. It, it felt closer than that. The first half felt closer, but we'll just get initial thoughts. That 3310 score to me, going into half, I thought it was gonna be a closer game. Well, it was closer. We had a uh a 20 or sorry, a 17 to 3 lead going into half with the Panther, Panther is getting the ball. Right. Right? So it was like a little bit of crunch. Luckily, Panthers only ran, uh, only got seven points for the rest of that second quarter. Cowboys came back in the fourth and got 16 points. So they really capitalized. Even even with the Panthers scoring, uh, Cowboys were still up. But for us to, like, solidify the win and uh, also bring us our, our win in our bets... Uh, they went ahead and put 16 on the board, and we respect them for that. Well, at one point, it was 17-10. In, yeah, the, exactly. third, in the third yes. quarter, in the it was 17-10. And we were like, we just got to go down there, score. AJ was talking about making his bets by having, no, the Panthers need three points. But then I said, no, you got to look at a guy getting a pick six. A AJ well, was, I didn't a think AJ, the pick six, obviously the pick six was uh, the better option, and yes, I should have gone for that. <laughs> uh, all I heard from AJ was, fucking kill me. Just fucking kill me. <laughs> no, no, no. My, my uh, point was, like, I wanted to get the over 42 points, so I was like, yeah. It would make sense that they go down and, and score a field goal. I don't want them to score The littlest touchdown. ammo that they could do, or the littlest damage they could do with you still hitting. Yeah, exactly. So but hey. But what I'll happened? I'll eat my words. But what happened? Something I'll eat way my juicier. shorts. Like Bart Sim Simpson said, I'll eat my shorts. Okay? Eat your shorts. And uh, Cowboys did come out and, and fucking push it over. Just one point, but look, it doesn't matter. Crack, Crack them if you, got them. If you got them for the Cowboys. One point is all you need. And uh, they also took a lot of the offense out, you know, late in that fourth when I was searching for my vape, maybe even. How many, oh, games, how many games have we seen where the Cowboys have taken out their starting offense? At least four. Th this year? First four. Giants, first Giants, second Giants. Jets. Uh, Jets. And this game, at least. There might even be one more. I've never seen that. That's something I've never seen. I've never seen a backup quarterback come in as many times or the whole starting offensive line gone. Yeah. This many times in a season. Here's the thing. When Cowboys decide to play football, they play football and they get 30 points plus. And that puts a lot of teams out of range uh, by the time you hit the third quarter or fourth quarter. So nice toss, dog. Tossed it. AJ, toss me one, son. Get one out, get one in is what we call this. Oh. <laughs> Fuck, what's that? Just a wild throw. Hey, he hit the helmet. Yeah. Are you, you Bryce Young? In, are you Bryce Young in it? What's going on? I'm just, I'm just tossing <laughs> a wild one. That was, that was your worst throw because at least the, the one that blew up on the mic, was still in the catching zone. It's just the defender made a play. Yeah. No, that was that one had no chance. Yeah, that's my most foul no pass chance. of the year. No you chance. No chance. Hey, hit my sound bite. Hit my sound bite. You know I'm what I'm talking about. Neck, bro. <laughs> AJ, hit the sound bite that we need. The only sound bite that we have for any segment. Oh, oh, oh. Find oh, it. You know what I'm talking oh, about. You know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Your Crackum player of the game. Who is it? I think this is a good way to lead out before we start diving into stats. Yeah, yeah, totally. And it's a good way just, well, it's still fresh in our mind. Yeah. Without even looking at stats, who was the best player on the field for the Dallas Cowboys today? 
Well, I'm going to cheat and just... He's say, looking, he's he's looking at the chat. He, well, I have this. I have, the, I have it on you have the, the screen, thing? too. Look, it doesn't But I already matter. know my mind. It's I know my, my mind. To me, it's Micah Parsons. He had his career game with three sacks, finally, uh, and also a total of six tackles. He definitely bounced back. And if, that, if we're going to see zero sa- stats from you one game and then three sacks from you another game, I could take that all year. Fucking A. <laughs> Fucking yeah. A. Cause that's the only year, the only time I didn't play him in Dwack. <laughs> yes. Good. I put I put Roquan I put Roquan Smith no. in and said yes. yes. Well, how did Roquan do? In well. seven points, which uh, 11, I mean, 11 or three sacks could so, be more so than Den- that. So Denny yeah. Watson says best player is Micah, but Bland ended the game. That's fine, but Ad, I don't even chat. I'm sorry to say this. I don't care. I want to hear our opinions first. Yep. And then we'll dive into chat. Who's your crack of player of the game? Well, I'm gonna say Micah Parsons because I'm wearing the jersey. I wanted him to have that three sack game. And I didn't I, mean that to chat. I do. Yeah. I do care what hey, the chat thinks. Hey, chat, just so, just for the record. No, Anth, it's Anth, a, Anth hates you guys. I love you guys. It's a proper rap. <laughs> no, matter, no matter what you're saying, I love you. Well, guys. I, you know who Adam is. He's the he's the, the fucking man champ. of the people. He's, he's the, the people's champ. I'm the people's champ. Um, Mike Michael Parsons for sure has a, the crack and player of the game. The fact, however, though, when we talk about like we gave it to Sedarian Lamb for breaking or tying the record a couple times we gave him back-to-back crack and player of the games when he when he tied the record deron bland just did tie the nfl record for pick sixes so to say now to That's say true. he should be the crack and player of the game there is a good conversation that he should be the crack and player of the game however it would make a it would have more weight if it was a a a, a more if it wasn't a one in eight team i guess the crazy thing about that now i'm thinking uh, you didn't see a single pass get completed on his side i would i would say this that if had micah only had two sacks only <laughs> well and then, then that might then then i could see bland because bland bland had a good game as well just like overall so ad who are you going micah or bland because it's going to make my decision harder I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, uh, well, Bandwagon Bob is, Bob is saying you lost half the viewers with that comment. I don't know which comment she's talking about. <laughs> that I said I hated the, the, I didn't care what they said. Yeah. Uh, and then and then Kilo C says, I got your back chat. Um, you know what? I'm going to go, I'm going to go Micah Parsons, three sacks. It, it was, it, it's a, it's a good stat line. We mm. needed that stat line from Micah. I'm going to go Micah Parsons. See, I thought for the show, you were going to say Deron Bland and then make it, make it up to me to decide who actually was but we'll get there you'll figure out how show business works one day. <laughs> sorry what, what were you saying <laughs> oh bah, 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 I, ca- I, I can't hear him can't hear yeah him. i'm muted i'm muted i like the argument for deron bland because he didn't have any receptions really against him he did tie a record but micah had those two sacks in the first quarter when the game's really on the line right like the those two sacks early in the in the game are super pivotal and then to get his third to to have a career high after coming off a game where he had zero tackles zero sacks i gotta give it to linebacker plus he just he looked fast on every play deron bland very close second but the kraken player of the game has to be michael parsons has to be okay Absolutely. so so we're both saying michael parsons aj can you give us a contention point or are you gonna aj went right? first i went f- Oh, oh my God! Guess what? I wasn't listening. AJ went first. Oh AJ went first. My. Who did he say? Effin. Micah Parsons. I started that's, it off. That's why oh you went God. right after me. So this is what I, I meant. handed it. I I I handed the fucking football off to you. How much <laughs> weed do you smoke and this, during? Maybe, and, maybe not. And this is what I meant. Maybe fuck yourself. AJ went Micah, and then Chat gave you a layup to go Deron Bland, and then it would have been me to decide between Deron Bland and Micah Parsons, who was the crack of player of the game. Ad's just been riding this conversation the whole time. Boner alert! But we went, hey, Micah Parsons, we all agree. It's AJ, una- AJ, it's, it's all, yeah. AJ, who'd you pick? <laughs> AJ, who'd you pick? I can make it, let me make the Duran Bland argument. Well, you gotta say the name properly for this. <laughs> the uh, De, De Rune Bloomed. Not the so blonde. blonde. No, the run blonde. Actually, what I w- really want to talk about is, hey, when are our boys from uh, blogging with boys? Blog- six blogging the boys. Sorry, he's showing up in six uh, six thirty. They, they they land six thirty, so they'll they'll be wherever we are at like around. Well, no, but they're in Arlington, so this is some behind baseball. We're twenty something minutes away, so unless they came right to where we were going from the airport, which I highly doubt, they'll probably want to go put their shit in their Airbnb. 
Texas Live would make more sense to go. I'm saying like we're 20 minutes away or 25, 30 minutes away from the stadium. I mean, we can make that trip. It's like a fucking. Oh, yeah. Trip. That's what I mean. We just got to yeah. Texas Live. I did message Texas Live. If we could get like a, t- a table of, I don't know, 15 on a Monday night against the Eagles, it's probably going to be busy Thanksgiving Day week. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Well, it's we're, we're we'll in see, Texas, yeah. so yeah, you'd hope it'd be live. If it's you'd not, hope it'd be live with a bunch of hook us fans. up. You know uh, what they so say about see. Texas? Everything's bigger in Everything's Texas. Everything's bigger. Kilo C says, "Who do you think you are?" I. That's right. Hey. Who do you think you are? I am. Hey, I want to ask you guys mm-hmm. biggest point of the game. Like, what was the biggest takeaway that you guys saw during the game? I like that the Cowboys. Um, they. They came out, as we expected, three and out, which sucks that that's the expectation when they get the ball kicked to them. But for me, it is. And there were some, like, some piss poor uh, movement on the ball on offense, but they still came out. They kept it together. They didn't, they bend. They did not break. There was a a nice correction on the running uh, defense, the rushing defense. They ended up with a much better yards per average at the end of the game than they did in the first half of the game. Um, so I think it sucks that this was done against a such a fucking bottom of the barrel team. A one nine team now. <laughs> but hey, we came home away with the victory. We won our bets. Yeah. I'm pretty stoked. Yeah. Well, okay, so <laughs> here here's the thing. Yeah, get it we, out. Get it out. Uh, sorry, I was just, I was just looking at this. <laughs> Ad's problem is he's reading chat as he's trying to think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's his problem. So right. he's changing. His- uh, hey, I, guess what? I'm the fucking people's chat. I know, I know. I get it. I okay, get it. so uh, Denny Watson in the chat's actually about to say, that said the same thing that I was going to say. Our run defense looked terrible today. Yeah, it looked okay? awful. So our run defense had a lot of work, and I think you go into the back I had half. a lot of work. You know, Besides Alex getting that double Whataburger that yeah. uh, Kilo C is saying in the chat, <laughs> uh, if we look at a back half of the season and say, okay, well, look, our, our run defense needs to shore it up a little bit, I think a game like this, should we have been dominating for most of the game? Yeah, absolutely. However, we still ended in a score that is absolutely what it should have been to, to start with 33 to 10 is still a fucking blowout game in yeah. my opinion. I, so I, it, yeah. it, it, we, we struggled for most of the, we struggled for most of the game in a lot of areas. However, we still came out with 33 to 10. Our and defense, pulled our starters. Our, we pulled, and our, pulled our starters. We, yeah. yeah. Okay. So for we, almost a quarter, yeah. we pulled our starters for almost a quarter. We still did a defensive fucking pick six domination and our offense again, Dak Prescott was not the problem today. If nope. anybody out there is saying Dak is ass, Ultra Cowboy, I'm looking at your fucking stupid crack him if you got him face. <laughs> crack him if you got crack him. Crack him if you got him face. Ads, ads hitting it with some heat right now. If you say Dak Prescott is ass, Dak Prescott played fucking awesome tonight. He was one of our best if, players. If you relook at all, we had so many fucking receiver drop passes. Das Prescott. Everybody, everybody in chat was saying fucking bench Tolbert. You know, Tolbert had at least four times where he fucking dropped the pass. Yeah. So when we're looking at in, in terms of how our offense is moving, uh, running up the middle. Okay. TP20 still struggling a little bit. I thought TP20 had one of the better, better games. AJ, get up to the rushing yards with where, with Tony okay. here. I, his one touchdown at the end was a, was a rushing touchdown. It, sa- it saved his It saved his day. It, Still, it, though, he was a five-yard average. Yeah, when he got his chances, yeah, th- this is the thing with, with running backs. They could have only two to three yards per carry for the whole game, but if then you break one off for 25 yeah. and a touchdown, yeah. I don't give a fuck. That's good. That yeah. I'll, I'll take it. I'm going to put the combined effort. It is a game of attrition. It's Yeah, and Tony Pollard, that's what we were used to seeing. TP20, you know, getting three, four, Two, but five, then his six, explosive, and then just a play out of nowhere, and he finally had that today. You know, you know where I think, um, perhaps. Don't some, hey, don't touch me. Okay, <laughs> don't touch me. No, well, you, touch well, me. you guys where, are where, 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 where I think the the okay. rush the rush game hurt was Rico did not come in yes. and and do his ten yard rush. Yeah. He had eight. He had eight carries. Yeah, which we all expected. We wanted Rico to have. So TP twenty had say when he break down their carries, they had twenty carries each, okay. or yep. between them. Yeah. Uh, Tony Pollard had he had 60% of the carries yep. and Rico had 40. 
the, I don't mind that split. I don't mind a 60-40 split, but I want... I want Reece, a little bit more. I want a little bit. I don't want a 2.9 average. I'm going to say this. I think CeeDee Lamb should be our starting running back. One carry for seven yards or a seven-point average. I, I, I don't want him to be our, our, our wide receiver anymore. I want How about Turpin? Lamb. Where's Turpin at? What did one, he have? One yard. Oh one my carry, God! Thirteen yards. Turpin average. should be. Put Tur- him in. Why is it? Why is it Turpin? I mean, it's because his dad's not a coach for the team. Yeah. No, no, no. He. <laughs> at, at, at the end of the day, in terms of of our our rushing, Pollard has not only been very good on just being consistent. Although, yes, if you compare his uh, numbers this year in terms of an average yard per com- uh, carry to last year it's different but also the scenario is different he's now been the token number one uh rb in dallas so but it's also his ability to shore up that passing game and 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 be a good pass blocker so you can't take that away from him because that's the unseen value of a, a running back is his, is his ability to be consistent take the go. beats Getting some of that screech coming back Getting up. Getting some of that screech, screech baby. But yeah, exactly. Being, being, that was a concern of ours. Um, and I will say, Ant, that like you, you uh, wisely brought our attention to that is Zeke was very good at blocking. And we had concerns because TP20's blocking numbers in, um, while with Zeke were, were not good. So that, that was a big concern with, with Polar. But to see him come in and be able to block, okay. Makes me feel a lot better about it, about his numbers. Overall, though, an unimpressive game by Dak Prescott compared to what he's done. He okay. finished with can, 189 can, can, yards, can you, five yeah. yard average, two touchdowns, no interceptions. There's no, literally, you can't really complain, but in terms of his uh, last four games in, uh, compared to this one, this has been, uh, been the most underwhelming game in five weeks. Oh, sorry, I. And I and I, I'll I'll disagree with that because I don't think Dak Prescott had an unimpressive game. I think the fact that some of his receiving core that he was who do you think you are? I am. Some of his receiving core had they caught the ball when okay. Dak had it right in their fucking hands. That is true. His numbers are better. His numbers are phenomenally probably better. honestly four or five. There was so, so, there was there was at least I'd say at least four catches that should at least have been made. four no f- minimum five I would probably say whoa 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 what a Dak rider this guy wow what a Dak what a Dak rider this guy is I would probably argue seven catches seven you think hundred percent wow, okay hey, hey. I'm not arguing I- seven. <laughs> seven 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 so so this this I'm leads me off. to Leroy Jenkins' question. You guys think we need to draft a wide out question mark? So we have we have talent in the I don't wide think receiver. You could ever have too many wide receivers. No, because of the amount of uh, opportunity and, and and just what we've seen and young wide receivers coming into the NFL, like if you have an opportunity to draft a high ranking wide receiver. He could be Late. better than the top. He could yeah. be your third wide receiver. Yeah. Which is we, huge in the NFL today. Look look at the last, say, three years at all the kind of higher drafted wide receivers. A lot of them hit. I know there are some misses, but there's a really good chance that those guys are going to um, have some. And actually, it's not even like Puka Nakua, for example. Yeah. Right system. EJ Savage was a big, big guy of him. Big fan of him, yeah, exactly, and and uh, it's hard to pick because like there are so many talented dudes, but I I don't shy away from picking a wide receiver early. I don't think picking a wide receiver is bad because in today's NFL, one you have to pay wide receivers so much money, like established wide receivers. So if you can go through your third, like look at what Don, um, Cedric Wilson made in Miami. If you can keep replacing your third wide receiver, your fourth wide receiver through the draft. Yeah, that's a genius move to do. And right now, the, our our wide receiver room's wide open. Michael Gallup hasn't had a great year. There's not. There's no guarantee that he's on our team next year. Tolbert, we we're hoping for him to be that third kind of slash fourth guy. There's no guarantee there. So yeah, picking a guy up in the between rounds. I'm not gonna say. I'm. I, I think there's bigger places we have to fill needs in the first two rounds but rounds three to five if you have a wide receiver that you like definitely take them i i would say um one of our first one of our optimal picks needs to be 
a linebacker position. Linebacker. E- even though yeah. I know Overshawn's coming back, but still. It's not a guarantee, though. It's not a guarantee. We we had a, a lot of high hopes, and the guy has a lot of praise. Safety. We never got to see him in an actual NFL game. Safety still a, a place that we're going to have turnover. There's places besides wide receiver that the I think the two top picks should go to. Offensive line, you got to start worrying about um, Tyron oh, Smith. Yeah, yeah. You got to start thinking about your left tackle. If you're planning on Tyler Smith being your left guard, you 100 percent got to start thinking what you're going to do with left tackle. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't want. I, I don't want another rookie wide receiver. I want. I want more of a veteran route runner receiver. I think. I think if you look at if you're talking about get another offensive line alignment that you can bring up early on. I fucking round one and two get O line taken care of. Well, and they're so good. The Cowboys are so good at finding those O-linemen, O-linemen. So the uh, fact uh, that they didn't draft an Osiris Torrance or see some of these other guys in the early rounds, we can also use that the reverse way and be like, well, if they didn't like them, they've been so good at picking linemen that they they, they know what they're looking at. They know what they want. But next year, it's de- offensive linemen in the first three rounds has to happen. Let me just read to you guys some, Do it. Uh, some wide receivers that are becoming free agents in 2024. Let's okay. hear it. Let's hear it, you little fuck. We got fuck. Mike Evans, Odell Beckham Jr., Curtis Samuel, Tyler Boyd, Seti Will, Seti, 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 Bring him back. Bring him back. Kendrick Bourne, DJ, DJ uh, Chark. I, so, think, I think Seti could be a guy we could get back. Honestly, Still all, young. all of those guys I'd be very happy with. Except I, for o, OBJ, I, I don't o, think. I think o, OBJ's he's chip sale. Too, too much yeah. money and too injury prone. Mike And Mike, just a fucking headache. Yeah, Mike, Mike Evans. Curtis Samuel, Tyler Boyd, I would love to take them. All weird, Except different. Setting the entertainer, all like different, to- totally. Uh, yeah, Evans is probably not gonna be available just due to his. Uh, d- he'll be back with the box. The, the yeah. shitty, the shitty thing is that Seti, the entertainer, Cedric Wilson would have been a better pro- uh, pro- uh, producer than MG13. I feel. Probably, yeah. I, I, like, th- I think they yeah. got rid of him because they had MG13 coming back. Well, they signed MG13. Uh, coming off his big leg injury and they knew they couldn't keep Cedric because Cedric had such a good year, but they probably could have done something less for Cedric Wilson. And now we're just playing like theoretical. Yeah. So it's tough to do, but, but it's, uh, but it's fun. But well, it is ha- fun. How about this? Gallup went ahead and got three receptions for 31 yards. He did most of that in like the first quarter and a half. I believe we saw all of his fucking receptions and our boy CD only ended up with, Six, he got six receptions, but only 38 yards. We'll get those stats up on the screen. Yeah, so we'll bring, bring the stats up. So Jalen Tolbert, two receptions for fucking five targets. Do not like that. Well, Ant's going to piss right here. <laughs> Ant's bringing his wiener up. So, 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 so going through some of the stats, we got Brandon Cooks, three receptions, four targets. So he's three for four. Brandon Cooks, great, solid stats. Uh, Sedarian Lamb, six receptions for nine targets, one tutty, uh, with an average of 6.3. Obviously, that's our WR1. Jake Fergie, three for five, uh, no tuds, um, average is 10. Michael Gallup, three for five. So, as much as I was just slanging and banging Michael Gallup, he, he did have a D. No, no, since look, that line. no, 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 yes, and no, but we watched the game, so you like Gallup's. Three receptions came in the first um, quarter and a half. Right. And then after that, he was done. Um, I want to look over here at Thielen. What did Thielen get? Eight receptions, 74 yards. Like 11 targets. 11 t- I'm just saying, the the old man over there in Carolina still fucking drawing all of the targets. And, and, and guess who he was against? He was against you. Lewis. Uh, yeah, he was against J. Lou. Not me. Well, hey, I had him on my team, so let's see what he oh, got. Oh, point I wise. See. He only put up uh, 11 fantasy points. So what guess what? What are we what? doing here? 11 how, fantasy points for how, Thielen. How are we doing in that game? What's uh, you're 109 yeah. versus 89. You're going to probably take it. Oh, fuck. I really unless, my, unless Stafford, who What's I have. What's the uh, projection? Thielen put up 11 points, eh? Uh, fantasy? It's 124 to 122, so it's still a close game. You're still projecting a close um, yeah. game. Yeah. Um, what the one thing I was going to say, Luke Schoonmaker, two for two, one touchdown, and we only saw him. So, what what is what is Schoony. the case? We have Fergie and Schoony. Those seems to be those, those seems to be. Seems it seems to be. to be our one and two tight ends. I told you what I think about Schoony. How they should play Schoony. 
Say it again for the for the for the fans. I will. I think they should continue to play Scooney as just like primary blocker when he's out there. Just continue to block. Throw the yardage plays to Ferguson where we need to get yards because he is. Yep. I'm, I'm, I don't even know if he's Move the change with Fergie, Move, yeah. and then t- if you have a one-on-one matchup yeah. with Scooney. In the red zone? In the red zone, in the, in the RZ are. or RZ. Yeah, because he's slinging it and bang it. Because you can continue to line him up as a blocker, but then once you get into the red zone, have him break off. Like, he doesn't need to be, um, what's the term, where they have to activate a, like, because he's playing a, a tight end position, he can just, like, run off. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, 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 I was Atta- expecting you to a tackle. If a tackle is going to be an act of oh, they receiver, have to, yeah, they have to say. It. They have to say. It. You don't have to do that with a a blocker. And if Scooney's been blocking down the field into the red zone, yep, you can get some surprise um, action there with him, where he actually becomes a receiver, and you don't have to announce it to the entire stadium you don't have to c- declare it like you're going through the border declare it. There, there you go well yeah. uh going back to the what, what we're talking because we're talking about the needs here Leroy jenkins is saying we also need a running Leroy back. Jenkins. that's pretty good we also need that's a running good. back i think rico and tp20 are both free agents oh definitely next year's draft yeah running back we're all fans. Of, I mean, we had, we got Deuce Vaughn in the sixth, though, this year, so we're good for running backs. We got Deuce. We're, we're good. <laughs> good. Good chance that TP would come back. Or here's the thing. You invest your money into Rico. Well, the good the, the one thing about TP20 being on this, on this uh, what the fuck is it called? I team? Can't. It's called a team? He's on this team. No, being on the deal where you sign one guy. This is the, the nudes. You get the one. You get the one person. <laughs> hey, don't get mad at me for you not knowing what you're talking about. I can't think of it. I can't think of it. What is it? Dalton Schultz was it the year before? Franchise. Franchise. Thank you. The franchise tag. That's the booze. Hey, so hey, hey, Ad saw it, it in chat. He saw it in chat. No, they're just saying tag now. But I yeah, franchise tag. TP twenty being the franchise tag probably benefits us. We didn't pay him a big contract. He didn't have a great year. There's a chance that maybe we could sign him to a two year deal for a lot cheaper. Do you, would he you, still has, yeah, fuck yeah. If you get Tony Pollard at like three to five million a year, yeah, bring him back, bring him yeah. back for two years, hundred percent. You're not look. You're not guaranteed getting that in the draft. Like you can draft the guy earlier, but you're not going to guarantee get someone that's st- like he's still having a decent year. He hasn't been a problem. Has he had these games where he's taken control and been that dude? No. But if we can get him for a price that makes sense, then yeah, I would bring him back. It, all day. It, it, it is something to say where you look at somebody like Zeke, who was the workhorse, the bell, the bell cow running back, who's taking a lot of those first snaps. And then you have TP20 who comes in and gets those fucking for sure yardage. Like maybe, maybe TP20 is just a solid RB2 and you get somebody who can actually handle more of the workload. Draft a guy in the fifth or sixth. Yeah, I said it. Yeah, I said it. Take a picture, send it to him. Yeah. Like Deuce wow. Vaughn, RB1. Deuce Vaughn, RB1, TP20, RB2. I mean, it is what it is. You know what I'm Look, like I don't want... My recommendation to all of Cowboys Nation is don't get married to any player, okay? It's a team. Well, it's Micah a, Parsons you're going to get married to. Well, he's going to be here for the next no, no, no. 10 years. But even still, if, if Micah started to shit the bed... You got to call it like it then is. And it's like you call it like it is, right? Like... Let's not get married to any player. Now, I don't think TB20 shit the bed. I think TB20 has come in and done what we need him to do. He got a 5.1 average uh, on this game. That's so, big. Anytime he had a chance, he or he he has a five. His stats today are good. He has good stats. He ran for at least half of a um, first down every time that he got the ball on average. On okay? average. So... Whether or not <clears throat> those were the the right plays that he got the five downs or more in, it doesn't matter. I look at that. I'm happy with it. And if I can, I want to keep the player on the team because I don't have to fucking run them through the playbook again. And so I well, would And be- there's this certainty. Like, there, if you draft, if you have a guy, it, Tony Pollard's early in his career. He's still not an old guy. Right? No. He's early tw- or mid-20s. You still know what you're getting opposed to dr- drafting someone. Drafting is still, you can you can do all you want in the world, scouting and measurements yeah. and all this shit, 
and still not know what they're going to translate to in the NFL. You know what Tony Pollard's capable of doing in the NFL. Yeah, and, and there are those running backs that come up and show up, but it's not consistently first, second, third round running backs. It's yep. sometimes uh, later than that, or it's like late round pick. So it, running back is one of the more risky picks to use in your, uh, say, top three picks. Maybe the th- maybe third round is a, is a good round to, like, if Take someone if, if someone shows up and and they've and they've fallen that far, but otherwise, like for me, I'm going. It sucks because I did not think this last year, but I'm going wide receiver first or second Whoa. round. Whoa! Wow! Yeah, AJ. AJ. This is the re. The, <laughs> no, the are reason, we brothers? We're brothers. Are we? Bro- did you not hear us? We both said the exact same. We both went. Wow! Way <laughs> AJ. No, but the reason is, is the opportunity. For instant su- success, they have a is, better chance. Higher. Yeah, they have a better chance. And I'm talking about a guy who is coming, who is a highly touted um, college wide receiver. I wouldn't mind wide receiver tackle in the first two rounds, as long as it makes sense. Ta- tackle wide receiver. I think. I'd rather go tackle wide. Sure, receiver. I was talking offense um, because I was comparing it to the wide receiver. But yes, no offensive tackle though. Off if you go OT. Oh sure, yeah. Offensive tackle in the first, and then wide receiver in the second. As long as the guy's worth the second round pick oh. and not reaching. Denny Watson in the chat saying Charbonnet would have been a nice back to split carries with TP. Oh. That, that's an AJ. AJ loves Charby. Charby uh, would have been good in this. In this also, system. J- also, I was just going to say, Jay in the chat says, I've been watching since 91, since we've been live since 1991. That's can weird. I, we've I, only started doing this since, since 2021. No, I, but can, he knew. He knew. Can I Can I get a shout out? My name is Lou Sassaluli. Lou Sassaluli. Shout Lou out, Sassaluli. son. Lou Sassaluli. Uh, fan since 91. Lee Lou Ro- Sassaluli. Leroy Jenkins is agreeing with us. Uh, Forever DC saying, Denny Watson, I agree about the Charbonnet. <laughs> Charbonnet. We all, we're, we're we all love Charbonnet. We're, we're all we Charbonnet like Sharps. And he's not doing, look, he's not doing too great I with don't, set, uh, Seattle. Well, right he's behind Walker. Say, I just want to say I don't. I I love Charbonnet too, and I, and I believe in Charbonnet, but I don't know that Rico Dowdle that that I would do that swap because that's that's the swap we're talking about. We're talking about Charbonnet for Rico Dowdle, not for Tony Pollard. Well, and if you're swapping Dowdle for sh- to, for uh, Sharby, well now you're losing Skoon. And I get it, Skoon makers. Stats haven't been anything jumping off the page, but you don't know what he's done in the, like we haven't analyzed his blocking enough to say no, that his, he hasn't had a good season. Um, well, from what I remember anyway, his blocking has been superb, more consistent than not. Okay, guys, we are gonna be <laughs> I'm gonna be leaving here pretty quick and we're gonna be meeting up. You're gonna be picking me up in less than 12 hours. <laughs> less than 12 hours to drive to Seattle. Why Woo! though? Well, we're, well, I'm getting there. We're, you're going to pick me up in less than 12 hours. We're going to drive our asses down to Seattle, back into the Americas. And we are flying our asses down to Texas. Hell! Because we are going to be live at that Thanksgiving Day game in Dallas, Texas, Arlington, Texas, whatever. We're not going to we're not going to split hairs here. DFW. DFW. We will be live for the Cowboys versus the Commanders. Fuck you, Commanders. Thanksgiving Day extravaganza. Can fans third annual trip. Let's go. We will be there. And all I got to say, if you know a Cowboys fan, Wait, I fucked that up. Hang on, hang on. If you know anybody who's not a Cowboy fan, or more specifically, let me get it. 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 Okay, quiet out for a second. Quiet down. Let me think about it. If you know anybody that doesn't like the Cowboys, I got one thing you can go tell them. Go fuck yourselves! We worked through it. We worked through it. We love you, chat. Chat, love you. Hearts, heart emojis. Heart emojis. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs>